I think batteries are going to just be a massive thing. Elon Musk dropped that line during Tesla's 2025 second quarter earnings call. And today, the explosion behind it has finally landed. The 2026 Tesla Super Aluminum Ion Battery is now here, built into the brand new Tesla Model 2. Headlines everywhere are proclaiming the end of lithium. But while aluminum ion technology has been talked about for years, few have dug into whether this is truly the industry-destroying revolution Tesla claims are merely another striking promise waiting to be realized. Right now, we're here to cut through the hype with real, practical analysis. We'll address whether your current Tesla might ever accept this new battery chemistry, and whether America's frail grid can handle what's coming. In our next deep dive, we'll reveal what Tesla's been hiding in its classified testing programs. Join the first 141,999 insiders riding this revolution. Tap, subscribe, and let that bell keep you quietly in the loop. Let's begin. First, how could Tesla's aluminum ion battery finally eliminate the retrofit dilemma completely? For years, Tesla drivers have lived with a low-grade fear. The moment Tesla launches a better battery, will your car instantly become outdated? This fear is real. A 2020 Model 3 has a glued-in lithium pack, custom cooling channels, and a battery management system hard-coded for lithium chemistry. When breakthrough tech arrives, most assumed you'd have to kiss your investment goodbye and buy a whole new car that's tens of thousands of dollars, lost not to mention the emotional connection you have to your ride. But the engineering quietly happening in Tesla's labs in Nevada and Texas suggests a different future one barely spoken of. Because mainstream outlets focus on clickbait headlines instead of the engineering revolution happening under the radar, leaked internal service manuals reference something called CPMI, or Cross-Platform Module Interface. This isn't a far-off concept it's real engineering documentation already inside Tesla systems. Unlike fixed structural battery packs that require rebuilding the vehicle, the new aluminum ion pack uses a drop and modular frame designed to slot directly into existing Tesla skateboard platforms, specifically Model 3 and Model Y units. Built after 2021, Dimensions accommodate packs up to roughly 70 inches long, 55 inches wide, and around 1,250 pounds perfectly engineered for the current platforms. Think about that. Would you spend $5,000 on a revolutionary new pack, or $30,000 for a whole new car? Share your choice with other Tesla fans drop CPMI if you'd consider upgrading rather than buying new. We want to see who's ready for this kind of future. Why, after 2021? Because Tesla quietly standardized mounting patterns and cooling plate positions across its Fremont, Austin, and Shanghai plants. It wasn't random it was strategic planning years in the making. Instead of ripping apart your car, certified, Technicians could unbolt the old lithium pack and slide in the new aluminum ion module. No cutting, no welding, no voided warranties or compromised structural integrity. But physical fit is just step one. The real engineering marvel lies in electronics compatibility. Aluminum ion cells operate at around 20 volts per cell, not the 3.8 volts lithium cells provide. Traditional EV systems would suffer complete electronic meltdown with the wrong chemistry. But Tesla's new multi-chemistry battery management layer changes that entirely. This system continuously monitors voltage and temperature in each module, adjusting inverter behavior in real time like a translator speaking both battery languages fluently. That means Tesla can push a software update over the air, instantly, giving your 2023 model why the electronic brain it needs to handle the 2026 aluminum ion pack as though it came built that way. Tesla has already proven that entirely different chemistries can run on the same control system after just a firmware update a software trick no third-party retrofit shop can replicate. It shows Tesla planned for this upgrade path long before. Any other automaker was finished making its first EV. Engineering gets even more impressive in thermal and safety integration. Aluminum ion cells pack far more energy than lithium cells great for energy density. Terrifying for thermal management. Tesla designed the CPMA sled with liquid microchannels under each module. Distributing heat evenly like a high-performance computer cooling system. Active heat pipes keep cell temperatures below about 113F even during ultra-fast charging at six times the usual rate. That's insane speed, but this thermal architecture is self-contained in the pack no alterations to your vehicles, main cooling loops, or architecture. When you hear these new packs can safely accept six times charging current without overheating, would you now feel safe parking it in your garage overnight? Comment six times if this breakthrough cooling design eases your heat and safety concerns. And here's where your wallet does a backflip. Analysts estimate a 60 kilowatt hours aluminum ion pack, good for roughly 1,000 miles of real-world range, could cost around $5,000 installed. That's way cheaper than buying a new $30,000 Model 2 plus taxes, registration, increased insurance, and losing the familiarity of your current ride. You could triple your range and slash charging time all for less than the cost of a decent used car. 
Some may ask, doesn't Tesla make more money selling new cars? Why would they cannibalize sales? That misses Tesla's real strategy, controlling the ecosystem, a retrofit program taps into high margin service revenue without chassis production, shipping, or dealership costs. It keeps customers engaged rather than losing them to competitors. Plus, Tesla becomes the first automaker whose cars are upgradable like smartphones, creating a subscription-style model delivering recurring revenue. Imagine 1 million US Tesla owners paying $5,000 each for upgrades, that's $5 billion. In revenue, with minimal manufacturing overhead, it locks owners into the Tesla ecosystem for another decade. Picture this, it's 2027. You bring your 2023 Model Y into a Tesla service center in Los Angeles it's been reliable. You know, every control, you're emotionally attached to it. A week later, you drive out with a pack that gives 1,000 miles per charge charges to 80% in under 6 minutes, and comes with a fresh 8-year warranty all for less than half the price of a new car. That's Tesla, using engineering foresight, modular design, and software control to finally solve the retrofit nightmare. But here's the billion-dollar question. Will Tesla actually let you retrofit or will they push you to buy new? Retrofit could cost them a new car sale, but denying loyal owners invites a backlash. The likely compromise, an official retrofit program for vehicles from 2020 onward with certification, mandated safety inspections, eight-year warranties, on retrofitted packs, and limited availability at Tesla service centers. The program will launch six to 12 months after the Model 2's release, giving Tesla time to harvest new car sales first, then offer upgrades. That's the question keeping many Tesla owners up at night. Can you truly future-proof your car, or will you fall behind when the world moves on? The answer isn't simple, but it's coming faster than most realize, and it could transform how we think about owning a car. If you own a 2020 or newer Tesla, you're probably safe and positioned for this upgrade revolution. Own an older model, start saving or consider the Model 2B, because Tesla can't retrofit every vehicle ever made, but they won't abandon their loyal base. Now, how could Tesla roll out super fast charging without overloading the grid or sending your electricity bills through the roof? That's a very real concern, especially for people on fixed incomes. And we've all seen what happens when the grid gets pushed too hard. In June 2023, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas issued multiple conservation alerts during extreme heat as land temperatures exceeded 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Electricity use hit a record 85.51 gigawatts, only to be topped again the following year at 85.56 gigawatts. So if Tesla wants millions of drivers charging five times faster, wouldn't that break the grid? The answer, absolutely not. Tesla isn't asking all those cars to pull ultra-fast power directly from the grid in real time. Every next-generation supercharger V4, V5 and beyond comes with on-site battery storage each, megapack stores, 3.9 MWH, and can deliver over 1.5 megawatts continuously. Tesla plans to deploy more than 10,000 such packs annually from Giga Texas turning every charging hub into a mini-grid. When you arrive for a 5-minute ultra charge, you draw from that megapack, which quietly recharged overnight when demand and pricing were low. Home charging remains stable. The U.S. Department of Energy reports 80% of EV energy is delivered at home. With aluminum ion efficiency, a typical 40-mile daily commute uses around 10 kilowatt hours easily replenished overnight on a level 2 charger without adding strain. Tesla's time-of-use software even schedules charging between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. when demand is lowest and rates can be 40 to 60% cheaper. Most owners won't use ultra-fast charging daily its capability, not constant drain. Here's a twist almost nobody discusses. Each 80 kilowatt hours pack in a Model 2 could run a typical US home using approximately 30 kilowatt hours per day for nearly three days. If 1 million Tesla owners joined a vehicle to grid program, that would create 80 gigawatt hours of bufferkin to the output of about 50 small coal plants. Instead of draining the grid, cars could feed energy back during peak hours and recharge. Slowly at night, utilities in California and Texas like PG and ER already piloting this technology in real neighborhoods, not labs. Would you feel safer knowing that even in a blackout, 